Hello everyone, my name is Michael DeFranco. And my name is Jihad Shayri. And this is our Advanced Cinematography 1 final project. In this assignment, we are tasked with recreating this shot from John Krasinski's A Quiet Place, which was DP'd by Charlotte Bruce Christensen and shot on Ariflex 35mm cameras using Panavision anamorphic lenses. Here is how we did it. The first step in our journey was determining where light was coming from in this scene. By analyzing the directionality and quality of the highlights and shadows, we came up with this lighting plan. Next up, we captured test footage that we could then use to build our LUT. For this test, and for the final shoot, we used the Sony FS5 Mark II with the Rokinon Cine Prime lenses and recorded RAW into the Convergent Design Odyssey recorder. We constructed a rough replication of our scene and focused more on achieving the correct composition, lighting positions, and light quality. Bringing the test footage into Resolve, we saw that we had captured most of the look in camera, but some tweaks were certainly needed. We first debared our footage to S-Log3 and applied a technical transfer to get from S-Log to Rec. 709. Once here, we brought the exposure down and adjust in contrast. This got us close, so to finish off, we just made a minor correction to the scion light coming from the back window, saturated the warmer tones, and brought the uppermost whites up a bit. With our test complete, we prepped for the final shoot by ordering all the props and art that we knew we were going to need. On our main shooting day, we started by setting our camera to the correct height, field of view, and angle based on its perspective with the table. Next, we determined where the floor lamp, fridge, and shelves needed to be in frame. To make sure the very back of the room fell into the shadows, we hung a black duvetine across the entire back of the set. With the general set built, it was time to light. For lighting, we started by recreating our setup for the test shoot. First was our main light for the table, an S60 hung from a baton just behind and to the right of the female character. This provided light to her face, for the table, and everyone's hands. Next was an L7C raised high up to the left of our frame. This gave the mother some fill and provided an edge light for the boy and the father. To get the cyan light on the back wall, we aimed an L10C in between the fridge and the shelves. For our practical, we used a 60 watt bulb which was dimmed down slightly and covered with diffusion. Before rolling, we made sure everyone was in the exact frame positions, which took some finagling, but we wrapped with two solid takes of the frame. Luckily, our LUT was fairly strong, so we only needed a handful of minor corrections in the final grade. We again brought the overall exposure down and decreased contrast a bit. Next, we handled adjustments to some of the hues in the scene, making the backlight more blue, the lettuce on the table more green, and the skin tones more purple. Similarly, we removed the saturated orangish cast on the shelves in the background. The main correction we made was creating a power window on the boy to better match the shadow in the reference image. The last steps were removing this pesky flare that we couldn't get rid of on set and adding the proper crop and a touch of film grain to match the Kodak Vision 3 film that was used for the actual movie. There is definitely room for improvement with our project. Mainly, we overcomplicated the lights and the placement of those lights in the scene. While the raised L7C gave us the edge light we wanted, it also gave off too much light, giving the boy highlights on the back of his shirt and head. These issues could have been corrected by simply using one S60 with a china ball placed top down directly above the table. Another issue we found was that the depth of field in our shot didn't quite match the reference, as it was in softer focus. This is partially due to the fact that we were attempting to create an anamorphic frame with spherical lenses. Because of this, we heavily focused forcing perspective to properly recreate the frame. Though this makes for a great story and awesome BTS, it wasn't entirely necessary in some areas of our frame. And that's pretty much it. So this has been our AC1 final project, and we hope you enjoyed.